Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I'll give you your complete Tiger 1 playing guide so that you can dominate each match in which you use the Tiger 1 or any variant of it. I'll give you an overview of the tank, the variations of the Tiger 1 currently in-game, its roles, what modules you should research first, its strengths and weaknesses, general tips for how to most effectively play the Tiger, do's and don'ts, the best ammo to use with it, and finally, some final advice, all while having relevant Tiger 1 gameplay in the background to illustrate my points. If you couldn't tell, I plan on this being the most comprehensive Tiger video guide anywhere online. That said, please subscribe if you like this video, but without further ado, let's get into it. So to start, I'll give you an overview, and people have this perception of the Tiger tank, especially right when they first purchase and use it, that they will be invincible in battle. This is because of the near mythical status that it has as this totally overpowered tank from early to mid World War II. While it was extremely potent during the war, especially during the year or two after it was initially introduced, it often fought much lighter vehicles in World War II. Vehicles with lesser cannons, more poorly trained crews, or likely a combination of all of these things. In War Thunder, rather than face a BT-7, an SU-122, or an early model KV tank or T-34, all of which it would have fought in World War II, it faces tanks that the Allies fielded likely years after the Tiger was first introduced, thus making it far less effective in War Thunder than it was in real life. The Tiger doesn't get into matches fighting teams of BT-7s and T-70s, or Crusaders and M3 Lees. If it did, it would win a lot, just like it did in World War II. But, like in World War II, once the heavier tanks with more potent cannons were introduced, such as the IS tanks, the 76mm Shermans, and the T-34-85s, the Tiger became much more vulnerable, which, unfortunately for German tank fans, is what it faces in War Thunder. So if you were wondering why the Tiger I in War Thunder doesn't match the Tiger I that you heard about from World War II, that's why. So currently, if you include the rare and premium Tiger 1 tanks in War Thunder, the following Tiger 1 variants are currently available in game. The Tiger H, which is a German 5.3 BR Tech Tree tank. The Tiger E, which is a 5.7 BR German Tech Tree tank. The Panzer Befelswagen 6P, which is a 5.7 BR premium German tank. The VK 4501P, which is 5.3 BR and only currently accessible via the marketplace, but is also a premium tank. The heavy tank number 6, which is the Japanese version of the Tiger tank, which is at 5.7 BR. And finally, the Tiger animal version, which is a marketplace German tank at 5.3 BR. And now I'll just give you a brief overview on some of the biggest difference between the previously mentioned variations of the Tiger tanks. So if you play with any of these tanks first and foremost, this guide will still apply. The only slight difference to consider between all of these is that the Panzer Befelswagen 6P has much more frontal hull armor than any other Tiger 1 in game, meaning that it can absorb much more punishment, especially if it's angled. Additionally, the much more rare VK4501P is basically the same as the regular Tiger, except that the hull is a bit longer, making it easier to hit from the side, it has somewhat differently shaped frontal hull armor and turret layout, and that it features a gas electric hybrid powertrain and drivetrain, making it much faster in reverse than almost every other Tiger in game. Also, it has a much lower turret traverse speed and lesser top speed when compared to the regular Tiger 1. Interestingly, the frontal hull armor aside, the Panzer Befelswagen 6P is basically the same as the VK 4501P, with all the aforementioned strengths and weaknesses. These variations aside, however, the Tigers more or less all play the same, and regardless of the Tiger variant, however, you'll want to protect the side and rear of the Tiger at all costs, considering both the hull and the turret. Tigers are heavy, relatively well-armored tanks with extremely accurate, fairly high penning cannons that carry a large amount of explosive filler. As such, the Tiger is best in the following roles. First and foremost, Sniper. The cannon is so accurate and can pen through enough armor where the Tiger 1 can essentially be used as a heavy sniper. This role is likely going to be your best bet on any given match. The 88mm cannon on this thing is a beast. Secondly, you can be a frontline brawler but only if you can angle properly. Though its frontal hull armor is not amazing, unless using the Panzer Befelswagen 6P, you should be able to brawl very well, at least in a down tier. If you start facing 6.3 or 6.7 BR tanks, however, I would avoid brawling. And finally, you can use the Tiger to slightly flank enemies if there are no hills or difficult stretches of terrain in your way. 
Most regular Tiger 1 tanks have good top speed, but the Tiger quickly loses speed when not on hard surfaces or roads. Additionally, the Tiger E has a slightly more powerful variant of the engine when fully upgraded, so it can do a little better in this role if you don't mind using a slightly higher BR Tiger 1. So to go over which modules you should unlock first and really in what order you should unlock them, I'll just use the Tiger H1 as an example being that that will more likely than not be the most common Tiger that you'll bring into battle. So first and foremost, obviously I would start with parts. You absolutely need those and that should bring you to tier 2 which then you go for fire prevention equipment or FPE. Following that, you go with adjustment of fire to make your gun as accurate as possible. This is especially important if you plan to use the Tiger extensively in the sniper role. Following that, I would go with crew replenishment. This is more important if you play arcade, but it's still extremely important if you decide to play realistic. Following that, I would likely go with Smoke Grenade. Um, of course, Elevation Mechanism will make your tank more accurate, your cannon more accurate, but Smoke Grenades are excellent, and that has saved me actually quite a few times. Following the addition of Smoke Grenades, you want to go to Engine. This will give you a sufficient boost in power, uh, and you will be able to more or less kind of start flanking once you get this. And following this, I would almost definitely go with Horizontal Drive. So horizontal drive is extremely important being that the Tiger has a fairly low uh, turret traverse speed. And from there, I would go with the elevation mechanism. So we went with smoke grenade engine, horizontal drive, now elevation mechanism. Um, and it's kind of tough. So I would almost go from elevation mechanism to here. This is more so if you like the huge, incredibly uh, powerful uh, TNT equivalent, the explosive mass in this, like I said, it's around 300 grams of explosive mass, which is uh, far better than the Panzer in 39. So I would likely go with this if you don't mind trading off a little bit of uh, reduced armor pen for a much better explosive filler. From here, I would just kind of start filling it out. So go with uh, uh, tracks more likely than not. So this one, it's, it's really up to you, but I would go with tracks then filters, then transmission, then suspension, then brake system, and finally with the heat shell. And the reason why I would go with the heat shell last is because honestly, I've never had any uh, experience where I could do something where, you know, where this would be necessary uh, in a role that these couldn't do. So really your, your typical APCBC or APHE, whatever you want to call them, shells, should be able to kind of do the exact same thing that the heat shells do, except better. That being said, let's get into some general tips and tricks for how to play the Tiger 1. So first and foremost, protect your sides. I may have mentioned that before, but you really need to pay attention to this piece of advice. That's because the Tiger 1 side armor is not only weak, but it's flat, it has crew behind it, tons of crew, and it also has ammo. That spells a recipe for disaster if hit. Almost every single tank that this thing faces will be able to pen the sides with ease, even at an angle. You need to protect your sides at all costs, and if not, you need to angle them. Which brings me to my second point. Angle, angle, angle. All that frontal hull armor will be for naught if you do not angle. This thing is incredibly powerful, especially because of its cannon, but the frontal hull armor is actually fairly weak by many of the standards set forth by future tanks in War Thunder, especially around the 5.3 BR, 5.7 BR range. Even medium tanks have higher frontal hull armor than the Tiger 1. You need to angle it, and if you do angle it, I guarantee that you will see tons of bounce shots off of the front of this tank. Now for tip number three, don't act like you're in a medium tank. While the Tiger 1 is certainly quicker than most heavies of this BR, it is still slower than most medium and definitely all light tanks. Use your strengths to your advantage. For number 4, the Tigers have decent gun depression. Use this as well as you can to get into a hold down position to improve your armor as much as possible. For number 5, this goes for all tanks in game, but make sure to improve your loader's reload speed. This is especially important if you're going to be brawling. A quick firing tiger at close range is a tiger that stays alive. And finally, learn to fire on the move. You'll benefit very much from this skill, especially if you're used to playing on flat terrain. Trust me, there have been many cases where I've been firing on the move and I hit people and it saved my skin. Definitely invest in this. 
And I would start in test drive as a uh, as a start to really start boosting this skill, being that you will not always get the opportunity in a given match. And now for the do's and don'ts. This will be somewhat quick because some of the aforementioned general tips are also, well, do's and don'ts. So for the do's, stay behind cover when firing. Again, your armor is not all too powerful, so you will often need the protection of a building or something else to keep you alive. There's no shame in staying out of the main part of the firefight in a Tiger 1. And also, make sure that your role fits the BR that you're playing. In a down tier, you can go crazy with brawling. In an up tier, you may as well be a free kill if you end up brawling. Improvise, adapt, and overcome. And for don'ts, don't stop and fire the cannon before it's mostly settled. If you're breaking and you're trying to fire at the same time, you will most likely hit. This goes back to my general tip before of trying to learn how to fire on the move. You will be much better off, especially if you're on a road or some sort of flat-ish surface when trying to fire on the move than trying to break and then fire. This goes doubly so for the Tiger, but could really be applied to almost all tanks. Also, do not draw attention from enemy planes by using your LMG that's housed in either the turret or the LMG on the commander's cupola. Unless you're already being attacked by planes, this will likely lead to nothing but alerting them to your presence and also possibly having a, a bomb drive through your commander's cupola. For strengths of the Tiger tanks, they have strong turret faces, with much of the turret face being over 140 millimeters of armor. If you angle or peek over a hill with this, you should be at an advantage over most enemies, especially in a down tier. Has a very good cannon. The 88 millimeter cannon has high pen, it's accurate, and has good explosive filler, regardless of the type of APC BC ammo that you use. It also has good mobility for a heavy, being at 45 kilometers per hour in realistic and 48 in AB. Uh, this is actually achievable, especially if you're in a relatively uh, good area for that, like on a road or flat surface. Additionally, it has excellent frontal armor, especially on the Panzer Bethelsfalken 6P, and will be more than sufficient if you angle it properly with any Tiger 1, unless, of course, in a massive up tier, in which case, act as a sniper and stay away from all enemies as best as you can. Now, for weaknesses, they have poor turret traverse. Sometimes you will need to expose the side of your tank to do a quick lineup for your cannon to hit an enemy because your track traverse is faster if you're already moving than your turret traverse, making this an invaluable skill to learn while trying to react quickly to nearby enemies. This poor turret traverse is somewhat remedied if you use ground AB. Also, the armor can be penned with ease if you do not angle. Even by a 75mm Sherman at close range and at the front, you always have to be aware of who you're facing and what angle you're at. It's additionally slow when going uphill and when turning, even when fully upgraded. The Tiger, as mentioned before, suffers a great deal in soft terrain like mud so. And finally, it's a large target with very large weak spots. The Tiger is larger than most tanks and does not have insanely good armor protection. At least, again, if you're not angled. If you're not careful, you'll find yourself getting ammo racked from the side very often. The fact that you're a tiger may also lead to you being a primary target on the battlefield, so watch out. And now for which ammo is best to use with your tiger. And bear in mind that this will be in order and that number one and number two are kind of switchable, but, you know, I think number one has the slight edge. And that is the PZGR, otherwise known as the Panzergranaten, forgive me if I mispronounce that, and that is the researchable APC E shell that you can get uh, with the tiger fairly early on. So both APC shells are excellent to use, and I personally prefer to use the PZGR39 due to the slightly better pen, but the PZGR has only around 10 to 12 millimeters less armor pen at any distance, an even smaller gap when considering anything other than a flat angle of attack, all while having nearly three times the explosive pillar, making it much more deadly post pen. Ultimately, the PZGR39 still has plenty of explosive filler to do the trick most of the time, but the PZGR has enough wear. If the, P if the 39 does not have enough to kill the enemy tank, the PZGR will with its nearly 300 grams of explosive filler. Plus, it shoots a little bit faster out of the barrel, so there is a little bit better, uh, especially when it comes to range when you use the standard PZGR as opposed to the 39. 
And number two, you guessed it, the PZGR39. This is just about as good as the PZGR, but even though it has slightly higher pen at a flat angle, it has much lower explosive filler and a bit lower shell velocity. For number three, the APCR shell. This shell, while boasting over 200 millimeters of armor pen at a flat angle and at point blank range, quickly loses panning capabilities when shot either at an angle or at angled armor, like the upper glacis on a T-34. Moreover, they ricochet a lot and have poor post pen damage. Most Tiger tanks in game do not have this shell available, but the ones that do, including the Tiger E and Penzer Bethelsfagen, should use this shell situationally when you're fighting strong, flat armor and cannot pierce a cupola with AP he ammo. For number four, heat ammunition. This shell, while usable, is more or less redundant when considering the aforementioned APHE shells available to all Tigers. This is really best against targets at very long ranges by War Thunder mid BR standard, so 2 kilometers plus, because it maintains its penning capabilities through every distance. And finally, the HE shell. This is only good in very few situations, like when fighting unarmored vehicles, where your regular APHE ammo will overpen right through the tank. Uh, this happened to me only once in the dozens of matches that I've played getting footage for this video. So it won't happen enough for you to carry maybe more than one or two shells of AP or just regular HE with you. If that, plus you're not just going to be using HE ammunition, you're, you're not going to have that uh, ready to be fired at any given time. So typically AP HE, uh, like the PZGR or PZGR39, will more than do the trick where HE ammo would also kind of work as well. Okay, now for some weak spots for the Tiger. And the reason why I'm using the Tiger E is because it has Zimmer coating on it and I just think that looks really cool. Plus it has this so that's also pretty cool. Uh, this is additional armor in the form of tracks but Zimmer coating, just a little history lesson, was basically an anti-magnetic mine coating so that the Russians, primarily the Russians, would not be able to stick magnetic mines to the side of their tanks. So if you ever see this little pattern here uh, on any tank, whether it's in game or in real life, that's what that is. Anyways, so let's go over some of the weak spots and some of the spots that really you should try to get hit, if that makes any sense. So first and foremost, protect your flanks. So as I said before, the uh, whole armor is really poor. Plus, it's got tons, tons of ammunition. Uh, and if you somehow don't get hit in the ammunition, it will destroy the crew. You absolutely need to protect your size because this is flat armor. It has minimal armor protection, and a Sherman with APHE ammunition will be able to pierce right through that, uh, especially on the bottom here where it's only 62 millimeters of armor protection, and there's still ammunition there. So that's number one. Number two, same thing. You're going to want to protect the side of your turret. It's just about as easy to get. Of course, there is a little bit of an angle, plus they have the chance to hit tracks. Um, depending, of course, on the variant, there are kind of different sized tracks here, um, but you will want to protect that as well. So really just make sure that you're not having the side of your tank uh, be hit. And then number three, you're going to want to protect a full on, like just a flat shot in the front. So never ever, and I said this obviously many times before, never fight an enemy dead on. Uh, it doesn't matter what they are. If they can fight the Tiger, if they're in a BR with a Tiger, they can pen the Tiger at the front. Simple as that. Again, this was well known in World War II for being nearly indestructible when it was first released, but it was facing light and medium tanks that had very little in the way of cannon power as compared to tanks that were made from 43, 44 on. So bear that in mind. This is not real life. This is War Thunder and this tank will die very easily if you do not protect your front, especially right here where the armor is not thick. Additionally, you're going to want to protect the cupola, but that's not really going to be as easy of a shot. And if you can make that cupola shot, chances are you can make a whole shot and go right through it and completely tear up the crew. So additionally, where you're going to want to protect or where you're going to want to be hit, uh, if you have to be hit, try to be hit in the front of the turret. It's really, really good. Uh, there's tons of armor here. So while on the sides here where it kind of raises up, it's only about 90 millimeters. Elsewhere, you're looking at 140, 150, 200 plus in some spots. Uh, it really depends, uh, but you will want to be hit there, especially if you are at an angle. Um, you know, if you're facing one way or the other, I mean, your armor goes way up uh, right there, goes up over 300 millimeters. Plus, there's a good chance of ricochet at that point. Uh, additionally, you'll want to be hit in the front only if 
you can again angle it. So that 102 millimeters of armor turns into around 184 millimeters of armor if they're at a pretty unfavorable impact. Of course, they can hit right here and it should go right through, but as you can see, even the side armor has much more effective armor than uh, if it's at this angle than obviously at a flat angle like this. Um, and one other place that you're going to want to be hit if you have to be hit is going to be right here. Now this is additionally, this is extra good on the King Tiger, on the uh, Tiger E because it has those 30 millimeters of armor protection tracks. Uh, so really if you get hit at an angle, that 102 millimeters of armor protection goes all the way up to, I mean, you're talking 140 plus, 150 plus in some cases. And then they have to shoot through tracks of which are also angled. So really, if you can, I mean, it, it all kind of comes down to, again, angling. You can turn this frontal armor into a ton. It's just impenetrable versus many tanks, especially in the down tier, if you angle it properly. And I hope that this little portion here kind of shows that and illustrates that point to you. Because if the gameplay video has not illustrated that point to you, then hopefully this certainly will. And finally, the end of the video. Time for some final advice regarding the Tiger One. And if you stuck it out this far, guys, thanks so much. This advice will mostly harken back to what I've been saying throughout most of the video, but I want to go over it because you might still learn something new from it as well. Now, don't jump into the middle of a fight where enemies are surrounding you. It did not work in Stalingrad, and it won't work in War Thunder. And of course, I know that that was not the original case in Stalingrad. It became like that, but eh, I think it still kind of works here. Number two, though I don't have it on my tanks in most of the clips, in this video, put foliage on your vehicles if you have it. It will help tremendously, especially when sniping. Number three, minimize turning. The Tiger is fast, relatively speaking, in a straight line, but it will lose more speed than most tanks when attempting to turn. And number four, always be aware of the sky. The Tiger will rarely be able to get out of the way of an already dropped bomb. Trust me, I've learned this numerous times. Just make sure that you know where the enemy planes are. That all said, thanks so much for watching everyone. I hope I went over mostly everything and then some in regards to the Tiger 1. If you'd like, please subscribe and like this video as it will help tremendously in my quest to be at least the number 26th ranked War Thunder YouTuber. Heck, maybe it'll make me 25 or 30. I don't even know where I stand, but either way it all helps. But that said, thanks again everyone and I will see you all on the other side. Take care everyone.